Hi, welcome back to the Spanless Gamer. We're playing Atari games in order that came out in, and today we are playing Grand Prix for the Atari 2600, which came out in 1982. And we can see from the box here, Grand Prix video game cartridge for use with the Atari video game system. It's another Activision game. And it was originally $19.99 at KB, and then it was $9.99, and then it was 14 bucks, 14, or maybe 14 cents. I don't know, interesting. Back of the box, conceived and designed for David Crane for one driver at a time. Buckle up, snap your chin strap, adjust your goggles, and get ready to handle a high-powered formula racing machine. Uh, I was expecting the word one after formula. This is the Grand Prix of video game racing. The first game to give you the real feel and action of a world-class racer. You need all the nerve, anticipation, and reflexes of a world championship race champion race driver to master the circuit. Feel how your steering and handling change as you pick up speed, use your car around, and pass competitors over oil slicks and across bridges at blinding speed. And you'll hear all the sound and fury of a true Grand Prix event. Your engine whines louder and higher as your car reaches maximum merprim. Your wheels hum faster as on asphalt. Your competition zoom by, and if you hit your brakes, your tires squeal on the pavement. It's you against the clock. The road and the other drivers in a race to the finish line with Grand Prix by Activision. Cool. So David Crane developed this because he was working on a technique for painting large multicolored sprites on the screen on the 2600. And he had a color pattern he thought kind of looked like a Grand Prix racing car. So um, a racing stripe. So he made a game based on that. It was as simple as that back then to get a game idea. So this is Grand Prix. Okay, we're a big, bold car. This is, uh, you know, you make fun of NASCAR for uh, their oval circuits. This is pretty much a straight. No turning on this Grand Prix. Crashing, though. That's a thing. Okay, so... Oops. Whoa! Whoop! Oil slick. Nah, oil slick. Now we're going really fast. Blast processing right there in your face. Let's rate this game. So graphics, um, they're really good for an Atari game. Uh, let's give it a six and a half. Sound, um, yeah, it's, I mean it works. Five music, there is none. Story, uh, controls, um, they're average. I mean it's hard to screw up. You just go in a straight line and move up and down. Um, funness, you know, it's a short course. I'm sure it gets really repetitive, so I'm only giving it a three. Does it hold my attention? Uh, a two, and overall, Grand Prix is going to get a, let's see, give it a four. Uh, that was Grand Prix, or Pricks, for the Atari 2600. Please like, subscribe, we'll see you next game. Hi, welcome back to the Spanless Gamer, where we're playing old Atari 2600 games. They're not that old to me. Uh, on uh, in the order they came out in and today we were playing a game called Guardian um, which Guardian is a game that came out in 1982 and let's look at the box art here uh, we got a guy making a very uh, face uh, he's not really sure what's going on we've got a Millennium Falcon rip off there uh, not sure what's going on there and what kind of face is this guy making he just seems to be happy to be blasting some lasers. And back of the box, Guardian in a Dronesian starship hovers out of range of your lasers. Well, I guess that's a lost cause. No need to play this game. If her thermomolecular bombs can penetrate through your force field that protects the three lush green planets of your galaxy. There's only three planets in the galaxy. That's a pretty empty galaxy. It will blast them into a cosmic dust. Cool. Uh, your, you order your laser commanders to destroy the bombs dropped by the starship. It's your only chance! Yay! I have no fun facts for the game, because I can't really find any of them. No sound? 
Is that my fault? That's probably my fault. Let's fix that. Uh, da, 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 da. All right, so I have no fun facts for this. I have no fun facts for this game. It's an Apollo Games game, which isn't very exciting. What are you going to do? Let's play this game. All right. Hey, look at the planets all look like Earth. How about that? Let's restart this. I think the game played a little bit without me. What is... What? Ship just kind of jumps around wherever it wants. I actually, like... Am I just shooting things, I guess? I guess I can't actually shoot the ship that's attacking us. I'm trying to line up these shots, man. It's not... It's not easy. Oh boy, and you can't move if you're holding the button down. And your ship just kind of jumps wherever it wants to. I'll just destroy the planets already. Come on. I don't want to live in this empty galaxy anyway. Also, how big is this ship? It's the size of the planet. I'll just kill us. Your controls are bad. Apollo games, come on, man. Ugh. Look, my ship is moving and I'm not even touching anything. It's just moving left and right there. Oh no! Oh no, the worlds are going to be destroyed. Oh, you are the worst aliens ever. Oh, you got one of my planets. I like that my laser only goes just far enough to not get hit by the stupid ship up there. So while, I, while we are waiting for die, I just want everyone to know I'll be switching to weekly videos. Um, probably next week. I'll still be playing as many games as I do now, but instead of doing uh, daily videos, I'll be doing a little bit longer videos uh, a couple times a week, just because uh, apparently I broke YouTube, and YouTube does not like short videos. Uh, it kind of penalizes you for having many short videos instead of longer videos, so... I like doing it the daily one, but we're going to do an experiment, because... There's no growth on the channel, and I don't get any more views than the people that are already here. Um, because YouTube stopped recommending my videos to anybody, because watch time is low, because they're so short. Go figure. YouTube's a jerk. Alright, get that last planet. Alright, apparently that's the game. So let's rate it. So, graphics, um, they're pretty simplistic. Go to a three. Sound one and a half music there is none story your empty galaxy one controls a zero uh funness a zero doesn't hold my attention nope overall guardian is going to get a 0.5 that was it like subscribe and we'll see you next game hi welcome back to the spanless gamer where we're playing atari 2600 games in the order they came out in uh just a little update on the channel i'll be switching to weekly videos starting next week um, just because I kind of broke YouTube's algorithm by releasing two really short videos every day. YouTube does not like short videos, so they're not really recommending any of my videos to anybody, so we're not growing at all. I actually have more videos on my channel than subscribers, so, um, but thanks for being a supporter. But yeah, we're going to play as many games. We're just going to kind of combine them and play them all, uh, probably do like four videos a week, and um, I'm thinking like Mondays... Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays will be the releases, but um, yeah, just so you're not surprised when you don't start seeing videos, but they'll be a little bit longer. I'll cover more games in them in each video. So today's game is uh, Infiltrate. Oh, God, it's another Apollo game. Apollo! <sighs> so Apollo games, Infiltrate, although I do like the box cover on this one. Kind of got a really goofy looking Han Solo wannabe guy who looks surprised that someone's taking his photo and actually in all of these like even the one in the background he's like no don't take my picture and then in the back of the box infiltrate you are a secret agent entering enemy headquarters to capture documents you take elevators from one level to another while engaging lurking enemy agents and almost 
constant firefight. You must duck, turn, and fire, and duck again to stay alive. 10,000 points means you're good. So, uh, Apollo games, there's really not much information for fun facts. Apollo games, there never seems to be anything about them. But, uh, so let's play the game. Uh, so oh, we got a very rainbow. So this is, is this a ripoff of elevator action? Ooh. Ooh, that's the guy in the cover. Oh, he can duck. And he's wearing a, <laughs> like his little hat. Uh, okay. So let's go this way. Yeah, not a pretty game. So where are these documents I'm supposed to get? Oh, I killed a man! Or a thing. An alien. These enemies? Like, what planet am I on? Where people don't look like this. I want the... I suppose that's the document. Now what? Now what, game? What do I do now? And, see, and I don't think he has a gun. He's just shooting with his hand. <gasps> it's Mega Man! He's blue and he's shooting out of his wrist! Oh my god, stop jumping over those things. Apollo... Apollo games, your concepts aren't bad. Your games are... Sad. Your games make me sad. I had high hopes. Do do do... Oh, come on! Oh, he just jumps right over. That's your, your stupid control! Oh my god! You deserve anything bad that happens to you, sir. Er oh, Apollo Games, you're so bad. Oh, get off of it! You piece of crap! Oh my goodness! Oh, and it just continues. I'm done. No, I can't. I can't. I can't even. Graphics. Um, a one and a half. Sound. Zero and a half. Music. Zero. Story. I like the story. I wanted it to be better. One and a half. Controls. Zero. Funness. Zero. Does it hold my attention? Nope. Overall, Infiltrate gets a half. That was Infiltrate for the Atari 2600. Like, subscribe. We'll see you next game. Hi, welcome back to the Spamless Gamer. Today I'm playing International Soccer for the Atari 2600. If you haven't heard the update, I'll be switching to weekly videos next week. Still playing as many games, just kind of condensed into small, uh, longer videos, but less of them because I broke YouTube. Anyway, so this game is uh, International Soccer. Came out in 1982 from Telegames. Uh, and from the box art here, we just got kind of a guy who looks like he's kind of surprised to be playing soccer all of a sudden. Uh, international soccer cartridge for two players, two skill levels, amateur and pro, two four-man teams. Each player controls one team member. Control Computer controls other three men on each team. So it's a two-player game. Two simulated 45-minute halves. We'll not be playing that. Screen scrolls to follow the ball so you can pass to an off-screen man. Yay! Player on defense can intercept passes or steal the ball. Scoreboard keeps track of goals scored, time left in each half, and which half is being played. This product is manufactured under worldwide license by Telegames. Good for them. So, not a lot on this game, like a lot of these games we play. But uh, it is interesting, the back of the box is a lie, because apparently the back of the box says there are two di uh, different skill levels, a amateur and pro. There's actually only one skill level, and the difficulty switches don't do anything. So the box is a lie. Let's play it. International soccer. So we got an overhead view of the soccer field. So will I be able to score with one play playing? Wait, 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 wait. Wait, is that my... Okay. I was confused. It looked like the goalie was my guy. So I thought maybe for a second there. I like the scrolling effect for an Atari game. Um, 
And that's as far as we can get, because the second player is not going to do anything. So it's a two-player only game. Let's rate it. So graphics. Um, graphics are pretty good for an Atari game. Sound. Wasn't a lot going on in the sound department. Music, none. Story, none. Controls, from what I could tell, seemed adequate for a soccer game on the Atari 2600. Funness, um, maybe with two players it'd be more fun. For one player, it's absolutely not fun at all. Does it hold my attention? Nope. Overall, inter international soccer, I'm going to give the benefit of doubt that it's a pretty decent two-player game, and we're going to give it a three and a half. That's uh, probably too kind. Two. Um, that was it. Please like, subscribe. We'll see you next game. Hi, welcome back to the Spam This Gamer. We're playing Atari 2600 games in the order they came out in. And tomorrow I'll be starting weekly videos, so instead of daily videos. Um, but I'll do more games in each video. Anyway, uh, today we're playing a game called Jawbreaker, which came out in 1982. Um, we've got this box art here. Jawbreaker. It looks like it has fancy uh, shiny lettering. I wonder if it did Tiger Vision. Video game cartridge for your Atari video game system. Jawbreaker is a trademark of online systems. Were they really online? I doubt it. Cat Special 555. What does that sticker even mean? Is that the store name? Cat Special? Jawbreaker. Uh, okay. You're loose in a candy factory. Quickly move the chomping set of teeth to eat up all the candy bars. Be careful. The happy faces may get you. Clear the screen. It's time for some quick hygiene. A toothbrush will clean your teeth and get you ready for your next romp through the candy factory. Tiger Vision fun at its sweetest. Never heard of you, Tiger Vision. So this game started life uh, by John Harris for the Atari 8-bit computer family. Uh, and it was a ripoff of Pac-Man. It was a clone of Pac-Man. And uh, so it leaked out by the programmer and something uh, Atari tried to then negotiate the rights for it because they had the rights for Pac-Man at home. And that failed some culture differences between Atari and online systems. So they didn't get the license to it. And uh, then there were some lawsuits involved and all this other stuff. This came out before Atari's Pac-Man even though we're playing it afterwards. But um, so it, this Atari 2600 version is not the Pac-Man clone that the Atari 8-bit systems had. It's actually not really the same game. So interesting story. I don't know. Uh, you could read about it if you want at your friendly Wikipedia. Okay. Whoa. Oh, he can only go up and down when he's through the, uh, either on the side or... Ooh. Yeah. I don't know if I'm a fan of Jawbreaker. Nope. Not gonna get me. Yep. Oh, now they're... Wait. Oh, I can eat them now. Okay. So it is kind of like, it's like a different version of Pac-Man. It's uh, interesting. It's not a straight up ripoff of Pac-Man. It's a little bit different, but uh, you can kind of see similar inspiration there. And uh, I guess we're dead, so let's rate this game. So graphics, uh, graphics will give a two. Sound, one and a half. Music, zero. Story, Candy Factory. I don't think that's really what's going on in this game. I uh, will give you a zero. Controls. Controls are okay. Funness, um, two and a half, maybe. Uh, well, yeah, we'll give it a two and a half. Does it hold my attention? A two overall jawbreaker for the Atari 2600 gets a three. Uh, and that was it. Like, subscribe, and we'll see you next game. Hi, welcome back to the Spanless Gamer. We're playing Atari 2600 games in the order they came out in, roughly. Um, today we're starting something new. Instead of doing daily videos for the Nintendo and the Atari, I'm doing um, a couple videos every week. Um, so down in there we'll tell you the schedule but uh today we're playing three games journey escape uh king kong and lock and chase for the atari 2600 and if we don't like this we'll go back to the daily videos i'm just trying to fix the google algorithm that i think i broke uh, anyway our first game today is journey the escape which came out in 1982 and there's the box uh, we just get the journey album cover from escape it's for the atari video game system and sears telegame video arcade <laughs> So I don't have any uh, real fun facts for this game for the Atari version, uh, nor do I have the back of the box. So I'm just going to read from the Wikipedia here. Uh, this is from the game's manual. You're on the road with Journey. 
Yay! One of the world's hottest rock groups. A spectacular performance has just ended. Now it's up to you to guide each Journey band member past hordes of love-crazed groupies, sneaky photographers, and shifty-eyed promoters to the safety of the Journey escape vehicle in time to make your next concert. Your mighty manager and loyal roadies are there to help, but the escape is up to you. Yay! Mm-hmm. Whoa, what's going on? Hey, we get a really bad rendition of a Journey song. Okay. Oh, okay. Um... So, am I supposed to collect anything? Or am I just avoiding... I'm just gonna avoid things. Um, because what else would you do with your journey? You just avoid things. So I think there, I've played this game, maybe the arcade version, maybe I played this version. If I remember right, up in the upper right hand corner it says SS, which is the name of the band member. I don't know the name of that band member, but their name is SS. Um, you know, oops. I have no idea what's going on here. The button doesn't seem to do anything. Did I die? Okay. I guess I died. Okay, let's try that again. I have to do this for 52 seconds. Look at those shifty-eyed promoters. Those must be the groupies. I don't know what that yellow thing is. Apparently we have a light on the top of a traffic sign, maybe? That's what that is? I don't know. More shifty eyed promoters. Where are these photographers? Oh, that's probably what that light flashing light that I thought was a traffic sign light was. I'm guessing that is a photographer taking my picture. Oh, crap. Oh! That's a time limit, not how long we have to do this stupid thing. I get it. I get it. This game's dumb. Okay, so Journey, the Escape. Graphics get a... Um, those are two... Um, sound a... Um, hmm... A one. It's kind of a farty, synthy sound. Music had one version of a Journey song that didn't sound very good, and then whatever the heck that song was that was playing when we were actually in the game. Uh, one and a half story. Um, a one controls, as far as I can tell, you just move a dude around, um, but controls work, I guess. 3.5 funness. A one doesn't hold my attention. A one only for the fact that it's Journey makes it a little interesting. Overall, Journey Escape is going to get a two. And that was Journey Escape. And let's go on to the next game. All right. So our next game is King Kong on the 2600, which King Kong came out in 1982. And just have your traditional uh, King Kong on top of the uh, Empire State Building. And is that Indiana Jones up there trying to climb the building? Sure. And King Kong apparently can throw bombs. Uh, that's a new one. And let's see. Oh, that's clever. Look at He's like, the back of the box is the back of King Kong. It's kind of cute. Rescue the lady from King Kong's clutches atop the Empire State Building. You must climb to the top of the building while avoiding, jumping, the bombs of King Kong is throwing it. Where is he getting bombs? Who is giving King Kong bombs? The quicker you save her, the greater your bonus. <laughs> So, uh, this game was programmed by Carl T. Olinger and is a clone of uh, Donkey Kong, which is funny, because um, Donkey Kong was kind of sued by Universal. Anyway, this game is from Tiger Vision. It's the first game uh, from Tiger Vision, and Tiger Electronic Toys, who made this game, also licensed it to a handheld version to Tandy, which is kind of funny, because Tiger became known for making handheld games. Um, later. So that's, I guess, your fun fact of the day. So this is King Kong. 
Oh, he is an ugly gingerbread man looking thing. Okay. <laughs> uh, I get to watch that again. It's so good. We get to watch it again. It's awesome. Uh, can't... There we go. There we go, game. Those are supposed to be bombs? It looks like you're throwing birthday cakes at me. Or birthday hamburgers. So yeah, this is a clone of Donkey Kong, and it's not a very good clone of Donkey Kong. You couldn't even copy this right? Oh, tiger. Boop, 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 boop. Crazy, wacky, crazy, wacky. Oh, you got destroyed. I'm gonna hit my, uh, trusty Billy Mitchell button here and rewind. And let's see if we can avoid that. Yeah, there we go. Oh, he's coming back! Hey, you can jump backwards. Now we're playing with power. Jumping backwards power. I think this guy... I mean, looking at his hair... I don't know. He's got a little orange poof of hair there sticking out. I don't know if I like this guy. That's not fair. I'm rewinding. I gotta at least get to the top here. Okay. Why is the monkey at the bottom now? Okay. And jump! I jumped! I hit the button. You heard me. I said the word as I did it. I can't jump up here? I guess not. Well, that's stupid. Leave me alone! I'm trying to cheat my way out of this problem. Okay. Apparently you can't jump on the top level. That's really dumb. Okay. Yay, we did it. So exciting. And it just repeats. So that's great. All right, let's rate this game. So King Kong graphics, uh, you get a, oh, one and a half sound. Uh, one music. It's really annoying, but it has music, unlike most Atari games. We've got to give it a two. Story, uh, it's King Kong, sort of. So we'll give it a two and a half. Controls, they're fine for what they are. Not as good as the Donkey Kong game was. We'll give it a two. Funness, I'd rather play Donkey Kong. Or does it hold my attention? One, overall, King Kong gets a 1.5. All right, so let's go to the next game. All right, now we're playing the next game, which is Lock and Chase, which came out in 1982. And Lock and Chase, the uh, front of the box, is one of these M Network uh, and television made these games for the Atari 2600. And um, we got some yellow guy and some cop people with whistles. I don't know. Lock and Chase cartridge for one or two player, two skill levels. Each player has five thieves. One thief robs the bank vault at a time, running through... A cop, and he's caught. Keep picking up the gold. Get extra points for getting the treasures. Slam doors and get cops off the trail. Trap police between two doors for bonus points. Sounds like fun. <laughs> this game is an Atari, um, or a Pac-Man clone anyway. Um, and it was also published on the Atari 8-Bit family as Money Hungry in 1984. Uh, it was released on the Nintendo Game Boy, uh, part of Data East Arcade Classics on the Wii. Um, some guy, Jason Vasiloff, set a world record of 136,000 points in 2018. Uh, it was also s featured in the game Heavy Burger, uh, and they're going to do a remake on the Intellivision Amico. So, uh, yeah, that's fun. So this is Lock and Chase. And yes, it is. A, I can confirm it is a clone of Pac-Man. And I have been caught. I am a bad thief. Okay. Probably don't go that way. <gasps> a thing! Get the thing! Oh. What's the button do? Let's see. Another thing! Yeah. The button makes me put a wall down, you know, like those thieves that just carry walls with them. 
Uh huh. This is a Pac Man clone. It's a little bit different. I like you can put walls down, that makes it different. And there's no power pellet type thing, so it's not a straight ripoff of Pac Man like some other games we've played. Looking at you, Casey Muncher. Oh, I just trapped myself. Probably not smart. Uh, 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 let's go this way. Get those two dots and these two dots, and then we'll warp, teleport, whatever it is. And get to the exit, which I guess is this at the top, because the green bar disappeared. We defeated you, cops! Don't rob banks, kids. And that's it. And the game just keeps repeating. So let's rate this game. So lock and chase graphics are simple. Uh, one and a half sound, one uh, music. Did it have any? I mean, it had that weird sireny sound. Uh, half story. It's a one. I mean, you're robbing banks, I guess. Controls. Controls are fine. Probably the best part of the game. Funness. Uh, I'd rather play Pac-Man. Did I just say that on the Atari? I don't know about that. Funness is a three. Does it hold my attention? A two. Overall, Lock and Chase is going to get a three. That was Lock and Chase, and we will see you next game. <laughs>back to the spamless gamer we're playing atari 2600 games in the order they came out in and uh today we are going to play lost luggage mad uh marauder and math grand prix for the atari 2600 so that's what we're playing the first game is lost luggage which came out in 1982 and the box art a oh, goodie it's an apollo games game so it's got a crazy airport scene going on there with uh, the lady looks like she's about to fall uh, although, wait, I like this dude who's just watching this happen here on the right. Pretty funny. Lost luggage. Your flight has just landed and you try to retrieve your luggage from the automatic carousel. Suddenly, it runs amok, throwing suitcases in the air. You must try to catch the luggage before it hits the ground where it will burst open, spilling your unmentionables. Come fly with us, if you dare. That could be a modern slogan for any airline. Uh... <laughs> So this game was um, conceived of uh, from, what was his name, Sal Ed Salvo, I think. Um, anyway, he conceived of an airport one day, uh, and Ernie Runyon, I think is his name, was the artist, and there are two versions of this game, one with a blue label, one with a green label, and apparently the one with the green label has some added features to it, like hitting uh, the button restarts the game. Uh, and it's got an opening title sequence, and nobody knows where this version came from. Uh, the game, the the theory is maybe the the game programmer found some extra space on the cartridge and uh, tweaked it, but he doesn't remember doing it, and uh, nobody seems to know why there's two versions, but there are. So uh, let's play Lost Luggage, a game I owned as a kid. So this is a Kaboom Avalanche clone. Okay, here comes another airplane. That is a fast airplane landing to a luggage carousel sequence. 
Oh, my socks, my underwear, my green jock strap thing. This must be the green version because I hit the button and it reset. Okay, so don't hit the button if you don't want to reset the game. Oh, and like Kaboom, I can move up and down. Yeah, forgot about that. I did own this game, but, uh, you know, there are much better games to play. Yay? Oh, another plane. How exciting. Mm-hmm. I wonder why this wasn't as successful as Kaboom. So I think Apollo Games went bankrupt after this game, or shortly thereafter, so this might be the last Apollo Games we have to play. That would be great. I think we've seen that game. So this is Lost Luggage, and let's rate it. So graphics, um, graphics are okay. Let's give it a three. Sound, I mean, uh, a two music. It's got some two uh, story, kind of wacky airport thing. Controls, controls are fine. I like that you can move up and down and not just left and right, like in Kaboom. So I'm gonna give controls a four and a half. Funness, um, maybe a two. Does it hold my intention? One and a half. Overall lost luggage. We'll get a three, uh, and let's move on to the next game. All right, so our next game is MAD, M-A-D, for the Atari 2600, came out in 1982. And the box art, MAD, Missile Attack and Defense. Great, and a uh, very interesting little cartoon illustration there. MAD, defend your future civilization energy supply against waves of devious attack missiles. Your energy stations stand vulnerable. Use your ground-based photon cannon and pit yourself against computer-controlled missiles or let another player guide the missiles and do battle head-to-head. -head. Each wave of missiles becomes more aggressive and intense. Grab your controller and prepare for a furious battle that is in no way nothing like Missile Command. So I have no fun facts on this game. Uh, not a lot about these U.S. games other than the fact that uh, U.S. games so far have not been all that great. But uh, let's play Missile Command. I mean, uh, Mad. Neat. Oh, we get to hear it again. Oh, it's a little bit like Atlantis. Was. Uh, really hard to aim at these things. Now it's better off to shoot straight up. Try to get them at an angle. Oh, there goes all my important rainbow scaffolding. I was working on that. I was trying to build something. Stupid looking drone helicopter things. And that's that's whatever that game was for you. So graphics, um, graphics, uh, I'm going to give it two. Sound, sound was good. I think they used the same sound effects of other games we played for. Music, it had some. So I'm going to give it a two for music. Two and a half. Story, you um, won. Controls, I didn't like the controls. You get a half. Funness, uh, no, there are much better games similar to that. Does it hold my attention? Uh, nope. And overall, MAD is going to get a, a one and a half. That was MAD for the Atari 2600. And let's move on to the next game. Okay, our next game is Marauder from Tiger Vision, which came out in 1982. And we've got a really cool box art here. It looks like maybe the title was a kind of shiny, puffy raised lettering on the box. Um, hard to tell on a scan. But we got a very cool uh, space guy with his helmet on and a lens flare shooting backwards as he runs away to a ship. Pretty slick. Marauder, alien robots have invaded. Oh no, you must make your way to safety and recapture the cosmic treasures. Maneuver your way through six different mazes. Watch out for the alien robots hidden throughout the mazes. Shoot them or they will shoot you. Time is against you. The ultimate experience in alien evasion on Tiger Vision. 
And uh, I don't know what's going on there, but we got like one alien guy with a stick, apparently. Or one, he's just, I got a stick as a weapon, and uh, there's another guy in a pit watching him. Uh, weird. Uh, okay. So let's play the game. Um, okay, this is Marauder. This is not what the box art promised me. Oh, tiger. Just once, I wonder if they made anything good. I do like the overhead, like, movement of this guy. He can kind of move around. I'm the yellow guy, by the way. But uh, I like how he moves. And it's pretty slick controls. He can move, you know, really tight circles and... Okay, so it's kind of berserky, I guess. It's one of these stupid games, though, where, like, your bullets only go as far uh, until you push the button. Which I hate, because why would a bullet just stop because you shot another bullet? Uh, I don't know. It's dumb. Oh, what is this? I want that. I thought I wanted that. Um, okay. So it's a little mazy, a little berserky. What is that? What was that? Why is that shiny thing? I wanted the shiny thing. What is that meter at the bottom of the screen? Why is it counting down? What is going on? Who knows? What is even happening? It's the shiny thing again. You will not take this shiny thing away from me. Okay. Something good happened, I think. I don't know what's going on. Um, it's a little sad this game isn't better because the controls are actually really good. Um, other than the whole shooty thing. Uh, I guess it's a point is just to go to those and shoot them. I don't know. Uh... Cooper, you're no help. You didn't tell me what this game was all about. Oh, Cooper. Okay. So, graphics. Um, graphics are too... I do like the overhead view, but it's a little blobby. Um, sound, there's not a lot going on with sound. There really is no music. Story, um, I still don't... I, couldn't, I read the box. I can't tell you what the story is. Um, so, half... Controls. Controls are pretty slick. I'm going to give that a 7. Funness, uh, a 2. Overall, or does it hold my attention? Um, a 2. And overall, Marauder is going to get a 2.5. And, and let's go on to the next game. All right, our next game is Math Grand Prix for the Atari 2600. came out in 1982. And the box art here has a, uh, a kid playing Atari. Look. Look, no one has ever been that happy playing this game. This is complete work of fiction. That is not going to happen. Math Grand Prix. Your children will develop their speed and skill in this arithmetic in arithmetic while racing along the Grand Prix track. They'll race against a friend or a computer solving addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division problems. Just like all kids want to do. Yay. So this game was programmed by Suki Lee, who was one of the first, uh, earliest female game developers. So that's really cool. Um, the game cover art was done by Warren Chang. Uh, so that's that. Also in England, this game in or Europe is known as Maths Grand Prix because they like to put an extra F on S on the word Maths for some reason. Math, whatever. Don't know if you can hear him snoring. He stopped. He knew I was watching. Oh, well. All right. So this is Math Grand Prix or Math Grand Prix. Um, it's two or three. Two or three. Three. Zero plus zero. Uh, no, it, I know what it is. <sighs> two spaces. Two or three space. Okay, so if I want to move three spaces, I choose three. I can move two spaces. I guess three are probably harder questions. Let's go with three. One minus zero. Hmm. Hmm. No. Why are you so slow? This game is very slow with the inputs. 
Let's go three spaces. Okay. I pushed the button. Five plus one. Okay. Man, such a delay in like pushing a button and then things happening. Well, this is an incredible game. Yeah, kids are going to love this. Graphics. Uh, a two and a half, I think. Yeah, let's give it a two and a half. Sound. Um, there was sound. You get a half. Uh, music. There was none. Story. None. Controls. Uh, one. Funness. A zero. Does it hold my attention? Nope. Overall, Math Grand Prix is going to get a half. All right. That's it. Please like, subscribe, and we'll see you next game. Hi. Right, welcome back to the Spanless Gamer. We're playing Atari 2600 games in the order they came out in. Today we are playing Mega Force. Uh, Mega Mania and Minds of Minos. Um, so, first game up on the agenda is Mega Force, which came out in 1982. And the box art here 20th Century, Games of the Century, Deeds Not Words, Mega Force. Back of the box Deeds Not Words, Sardon, Sardon, a strategically important democratic nation, is under attack. Enemy forces are encamped just across the Sardonian border. You, a member of the world renowned fighting force Mega Force, are flowing in to save Sardon. Using a specifically designed war machine called the Motor Fighter, you must slip past enemy defenses and demolish their desert headquarters. The face of Sardone nation is in your hands. So this game is based on a movie, Mega Force, that came out. Um, it was part of an attempt at a studio called Golden Harvest to break into the Western market. It failed. This movie was critically panned, uh, won a bunch of golden raspberries, won. Um, there's a riff tracks on this movie that's really funny and you should watch that because it's really funny, but mega force is not a good movie, um, but it is a fun movie, uh, to make fun of. Look at the uh, the game Mega Force. Okay, so this is what? Now I'm flying. Now I'm a motorcycle. Now I'm flying. Okay, so it's Defender. It's just a clone of Defender. Okay. I have no idea what I'm doing. What the arrows are. Why are there space aliens? The bad defender phone made from a bad move. Uh, okay. <laughs> Good thing F is at 45. Alert! Yay! 
Now, that's about as good as the movie. Graphics, um, a free sound, a free music. There was none. Story. Uh, it's got a story. One controls. Not as good as Defender. Uh, we'll give it a two and a half. Funness. A one does a hold by intention. A one overall Mega Force is going to get a two. Uh, and that was Mega Force for the Atari 2600. All right, so now we're going to play our next game, Mega Mania from Activision, which came out in 1982. And the box art uh, has a spaceship shooting down UFOs. And uh, look, our scan was signed by the uh, programmer, Steve Cartwright. That's cool. Mega Mania. Mega Mania, a space nightmare. Conceived and designed by Steve Cartwright for one or two players. Thanks, Steve. Imagine being the hardworking pilot of an intergalactic space cruiser after a tough day in the cosmos. You naturally stop off for a little snack, two deluxe pepperoni pizzas, and a quart of chocolate mint ice cream. Later, you're beginning to see things funny. Somehow you manage to make it home, falling fast asleep, but your sweet dreams quickly turn into some kind of nightmare. A space nightmare. It's called Mega Mania. In this nightmare, you're under attack by some of the most outrageous objects you could ever imagine. Hostile hamburgers, demonic diamonds, sinister steam irons, belligerent bow ties, and the ultimate enemy... Space Dice. It's the most bizarre gang of intergalactic flotsam and jetsam ever organized. And the better you get, the meaner they get. Just when you think you've blasted the sky free of these crazy attackers, they're back in new disguises. The colors change, the patterns change, and so do the tactics. As your nightmare gets wilder and wilder, you'll be begging for mercy from Atari Mega Mania by Activision. Cool. <laughs> So as mentioned, this game was designed by Steve Cartwright, and it's um, very similar to Sega's 1981 arcade classic, uh, arcade title, Astro Blast Blaster. Um, nearly identical enemy patterns. Um, let's play it. So this is Mega Mania. I think I might have owned this game. This seems very familiar. It's very Space Invaders-y, but different patterns, and the enemies fly by. I guess these are supposed to be hamburgers. I do like that you can just hold the button down to fire. That's nice. Oh, what are these? Cakes? They look like cakes? Kids' construction toys, maybe? I don't know. My Starship Enterprise clone. Yep, take that. Weird lemon cake wedges, wheels, cheese? Maybe you're cheese. I don't know what you are. Why does it say CCE at the bottom left? I don't know. These are obviously bugs. Obviously. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, we're going for the world record now. What's next? What's next? I don't know. I can't see you. I don't know what those are. Tires? Purple tires. Oh, that one's gonna get me. Oh, I got godded. Curse you, CCE. If anybody could tell me in the comments what CCE is and why it's there at the bottom of the screen, I'd like to know but not enough to look into it myself. Washers! Yep. Oh boy. Oh, I still have a life left. I mean, how much of a life do I have if I'm playing Mega Mania? And those are obviously steam irons. Well, you know that because it said so on the box. I don't actually know that, but I assume that's what they are. It's funny I keep playing it because I want to see what the next wacky thing that comes out of the screen is. I'm here. Come at me. I can wait just as long as you can, game. There we go. Bow ties. Kill the sentient bow ties. Uh, 
Oh, they're hard to hit. They're small and they move. And the game is over. So let's rate it. So Mega Mania graphics. Um, you know, it's got a lot of different enemies and stuff. That's kind of clever. Three and a half. Sound. Sound is fine. Four and a half. Music. There is done. Story. Uh, you ate some bad food and you're having a trip. A lot of Atari games are based on bad trips. Um, we'll give it a three. Controls are uh, they're fine. Five. Funness. A four. Does it hold my intention? A three. Overall, Mega Mania is going to get a four and a half. That was Mega Mania for the Atari. And let's move on to the next game. All right. So our final game today is Mines of Minos, which came out in 1982. And uh, we can see from the box art here, we're just kind of a space dude with a... Uh, or a robot with funky other robot arms in his... He, did he rip off the arms of another robot and he's got them in his hands? What is going on? Minds of Minnows. Something terrible has happened. Yeah, you ripped off the arms of your friend. In a maze like Minds of Minnows, the smoothly running robot operation has been interrupted by an invasion of monstrous alien life forms. Oh no. Aliens stalk the corridors of the mine. Only a single robot survives to battle them. Desperately, he struggles to find and assemble pieces of his fellow robots scattered around the mine while avoiding the pursuing aliens. If he can assemble a large enough robot army, he can battle the aliens to fight his way down deeper levels of the mine and even destroy the alien command center at the lowest level. But if the aliens catch him, he is doomed and his only weapon against them is his stock of time bombs. Can you avoid the monsters and assemble enough robots to expel the alien invaders from the mines of Manos? Probably not. Find out in the latest video challenge from Comavid. Yay, Comavid, our favorite programmer I don't know anything about. So this game is uh, Minds of Minos. I have nothing on this game, but uh, let's play it. So... What? Oh, I had to hit start. I don't know why I could... He was letting me control things without hitting anything. Weird. I'm a robot with dancing legs. Look at me go. I'm wacky. Alright, so I can just kind of drop bombs to kill things that get in my way. Uh, is there warping to the other side? Yes, there is. I don't know what that little dot in the middle is, but I'm gonna get it. Okay, where are the parts of my friends? Uh, okay. In the immortal words of Axl Rose, where do I go now? Where do I go? Mm-hmm. That's this game for you. Yeah, there's another little brown dot. I have been reconstituted. I guess that's it. Game over. Okay. So that was Minds of Minos. Um, graphics, uh, a two sound, a three music, zero story. Story's pretty cool. Five controls, adequate. Four funness, uh, two does it hold my intention. A two overall Minds of Minos. It's going to get a three and a half. Yeah, it's too high. We'll give it a three. That was Minds of Minnows. Please like, subscribe, and we'll see you next game. Hi, right, welcome back to the Spamless Game, where we're playing Atari 2600 games in the order they came out in. And today we're playing four games. Mousetrap, Miss Pac-Man, The Official Frogger, which is uh, not the same as Frogger, apparently. And a game called Name This Game. I name it Poop. Sure. Uh, first game is Mousetrap. Came out in 1982. And the box art just has a... Uh, Clever looking mouse holding some cheese, and you got a dog and a cat back there trying to uh, stop him, I guess. Outsmart those nasty cats. Cooper, our cat's nasty. Our cat's nasty, buddy. Uh, I can't read that. It's really blurry. You must something, something start, and uh, it's dangerous to go alone, play a game. Uh, sure. Okay. So this is Mouse Trap. Um, what am I? I am the gray mouse. Now I'm a dog. Am 
I a dog or a mouse? What am I? Now a mouse. So it's a Pac-Man clone kind of thing. I'm a dog again. What is that? I don't know. I'm a dog. Nope, I'm still a cat. Or a mouse. What am I? What is going on? Alright. And it just repeats. Cool. So that's Mousetrap. Graphics, uh, two and a half. I mean, you can tell they're cats. I don't know what was changing to a brown dog was all about. Sound, a two and a half, music, uh, a one, story, a one, controls, um, controls are fine, three, funness, um, one and a half, another Pac-Man clone, does it hold my attention? No, not too much. Overall, Mousetrap gets a two, and let's play the next game. Okay, now we're playing Miss Pac-Man for the Atari 2600, which came out in 1982, and Miss Pac-Man just has the Miss Pac-Man uh, rendition of uh, the arcade artwork there, the uh, back of the box. Meet the queen of video games, Miss Pac-Man. She's all dressed up and hungry as ever. Score points as Miss Pac-Man gobbles up dots, energy pills, fruit, pretzels, and of course those grumpy ghosts for one player. Miss Pac-Man is trademark of Namco Limited. As most people know, this game started life as a cl uh, crazy auto, which was going to be kind of a, an enhancement kit for Pac-Man machines. Uh, after some kind of lawsuit against Atari for the company, uh, I think it's General Computer Corporation's enhancement kit for Missile Command, um, they were barred from selling conversion kits. Um, so they took this their game Crazy Auto directly to Midway, who was America's uh, distributor of Pac-Man. Midway loved it, bought the rights to Crazy Auto, and they changed it. Most people know that. Interesting story, though, is that the game went through many name changes at first. So it started life as Crazy Auto. Then it became Super Pac-Man, and then they changed it to Ms. Pac-Man, and then they realized because there's a cut scene showing a stork, people would question the relationship between Pac-Man and Ms. Pac-Man, so they changed it to Mrs. Pac-Man, um, and then later to Ms. Pac-Man. So went through a lot of name changes, and apparently they all occurred within 72 hours of actual production of the game. Um, and this is a far superior Pac-Man game on the Atari 2600. As we know, Pac-Man uh, was a notoriously bad game for the Atari 2600, a bad port, disappointed a lot of people. It's one of the causes of the 1983 video game crash in North America. And this game is much better. It's got the, you know, the uh, Pac-Man game just had a, instead of fruit bouncing around on the screen or uh, in the middle of the screen, it was just kind of like a block, a square. So this we actually get fruit that looks like fruit. It bounces around. This Pac-Man has the little bow in her hair. The ghosts don't flash quite as badly. Although in the, um, the stream uh, capture that I'm doing, I'm sure it's flickering. You're only seeing some of the ghosts some of the time, but it looks pretty solid on the actual screen. They are a little flickery. Not as bad as Pac-Man flicker, but... Yeah, much better. I'm not sure if this game has mazes that change, but we'll find out. Uh, the fruit changes, because it looks like I'm on the strawberry level. Get that strawberry raspberry thing. I think if this game had come out instead of Pac-Man, uh, or they had more time to spend when they made Pac-Man, and it was this good, uh, the video game market, you know, would have been different. Well, obviously, E.T. gets a lot of the blame for the uh, crash, but, you know, this kind of thing with bad clones of arcade games that are vastly inferior, over-marketing certain games, and just the amount of shovelware on the Atari um, also definitely contributed to the crash, so you can't just blame Pac-Man. Oh yeah, so I mean it's blue now instead of red or pink, I guess. Um, that's Miss Pac-Man. 
So Miss Pac-Man graphics, um, you got a six sound, uh, a five music. It actually had a little bit of music there, so I'm gonna give it a three and a half story. I mean, it's Pac-Man. Controls, they're good. Funness, uh, we'll give it a five. Does it hold my intention? Um, a five, and overall, Miss Pac-Man is gonna get a five and a half. That was Miss Pac-Man for the Atari 2600. And let's move on to the next game. Okay, next we're playing the official Frogger, which is not the same as the Frogger we already played from Parker Brothers. Um, so this game came out in 1982. And you can see from the box, it says The Official Frogger by Sega, a supercharger game for the Atari VCS. Uh, also from Sierra Online Inc. Interesting program concept and packaging pursuant to sub license from Sierra Online Inc. Yeah, we'll get to that in a second. It's almost like having the arcade game at home, arcade quality graphics, scoring and music just like the arcade, bonus points for the Lady of Frog. Fly and time remaining, extra fly, fly, uh, frog at 20,000 points, one or two player, avoid speeding cars and trucks. Elude otters and snakes, evade crocodile jaws, and beware of diving turtles. For use with the Star Path Supercharger System. Hmm. So we already played a game called Frogger on the Atari 2600 that was officially licensed from Parker Brothers. So what's the story with this game? Uh, well, the story is that um, a different company, which would be Sierra Online, had the exclusive rights to make frogger clones ports on a uh, cassette based systems so parker brothers had the rights to do it on the atari 2600 on a cartridge but starpath was able to get the sub license from sierra online and put it on their cassette system so both games are officially licensed for the atari 2600 one's on a cartridge one's on a cassette so not a lot of people played this one because not a lot of people had the supercharger cassette thing um well, we'll see if it's any better Oh, this looks a lot better. Wow. This is much, much better than the game most people played on the Atari 2600. Wow. Got that lady frog. You even got like background music. Man, the supercharger. I wish I had known about that as a kid. Like, I never even heard of it. Make you doodle. Get that data frog. Alright. I don't know what this song is. Oh, no, yeah. Make you dandy. Okay. Same song. Oh, I died. I can't get over how much better this is than the uh, Parker Brothers version. Obviously, playing the wrong version my whole life. I'm about as good at this as I am at the Parker Brothers version, but, uh, you know. I hate getting this one all the way on the side here. So bad, I'm gonna rewind. I just wanna beat the board. What just happened? I'm so bad at that one. Alright, last chance. Last chance, Froggy. Gotta get the lady on the way. Oh, missed her. Your fault. Obviously, we'll never know. Wait, he scrolls? I didn't think he scrolled. Maybe that was just the Atari version? Or maybe I just didn't know that? So can I literally just ride this log? Oh my gosh. I made that so much harder than it had to be. Well, that's Frogger, uh, the official Frogger for the Atari 2600 cassette player. Um, graphics... 
I'm impressed. I gotta say, I'm giving the graphics a 10. That's bold, but it might deserve it. Sound seven, uh, music. It's got background music. How crazy is that? It's not good background music, but it's got it. I'm gonna give it a six and a half. Story, it's still just Frogger. Controls, controls are excellent. They're smooth. You gotta give it a 10. Funness, um, about as much fun as you can get from Frogger. Eight doesn't hold my intention. A seven, I'm just impressed with this game. Overall, I'm gonna give uh, the official Frogger a um, eight and a half. That was the official Frogger for the Atari 2600, uh, and we'll see you next game. All right, and so the last game of the day today is a game called Name This Game. Okay, uh, poop. I think I said that joke already, but I'm going with that. Poop. So what is this game? I don't know. Uh, let's look at the art. Name This Game, an action video game cartridge. Great. Uh, name this game. This is a one or two player full color game designed to be played, blah, blah, blah. You have discovered a long sought after buried treasure. And just when you thought your troubles were over, things get really tough. There's a persistent shark who thinks that the treasure belongs to him. And he's after you as if that was not enough to contend with. There's a big old octopus sitting right above your trove who keeps reaching down to check things out. There you are shooting at the shark, fighting off the octopus tentacles. And you realize your oxygen supply is running low. Your partner in the boat keeps dropping you a line and you better run over and fill it up. It's not going to be easy to hold on to your treasure now that you found it but we're sure you are not going to give up without a fight cool so what's up with this title well the game was originally gonna uh based on jaws and it was offered to parker brothers who had the uh, rights to jaws at the time but uh, they lost the license soon after that so they never end up releasing the game so then rob durbin who uh, made the game he um then showed it to James Wickstead Design Associates. They picked it up. Originally developed as a game called Treasures of the Deep. It was then picked up by U.S. Games called Guardians of the Treasure. U.S. Games then decided they would release it as a game called Name This Game and Win $10,000. They had a cash prize to the winner with the best game name. But uh, before the contest was completed, U.S. Games ceased operation, went bankrupt, and shut down. So... Um, in 1994, there was a magazine, Digital Press, had a naming contest to name this game again. Um, and Russ Perry Jr. gave this game a name called Going Under, which alluded to not only with the game theme, but uh, the fact that U.S. games went under. So we're going to go with that. The name of this game is now Going Under, if you ask me. Okay. Get a little sea shanty there. Okay, what am I supposed to be doing here? Uh-huh. What? I don't get what's going on. There's a big old octopus, there's some sharks, there's a green-haired dude on a boat up there, I'm a diver, I'm shooting straight up in the air, and nothing seems to be happening. There's a pile of dirt on the ground, which I suppose is supposed to be the treasure. That about sums up this game. I can just hold the button and do nothing. What happens if the octopus gets the treasure? Come on! Octo squid, get that treasure. Get it. Get it. Yep, there you go. That's what happened. So that was a uh, uh, name this game, win $10,000. Uh, graphics are a four, sound is a three. Um, three, how about a two? Music, it had a little sea shanty. It was kind of cute. Three and a half story. Um, a one and a half controls. They're fine. Two and a half funness. A one doesn't hold my intention. Uh, half and overall name of this game is going to get a two. That's it. Please like, subscribe, and check me out on Patreon, where uh, for as little as a dollar a month, I do extra videos every week. That's it. See you next game. Hi, welcome back to the Spanless Gamer. Today we're playing three Atari 2600 games. We're playing them roughly in the order they came out in. We're playing Phaser Patrol, Phoenix, and Picnic. 
And our first game today is uh, Phaser Patrol, which we can see from the box. It's one of these Arcadia Supercharger games. Um, so that's, you know, took a cassette. Uh, back of the box, defeat the Dragon Armada in a challenging, realistic battle action. Real-time clock, exciting. Energy indicator, even more exciting. Alien proximity indicator, torpedo status indicator, combat range scanner, torpedo target lock feature, Dragon fighter ships. So enemies are a feature of this game. Shield status indicator and a message display. Dragon controlled sector, neutral sector, friendly starbase sector, special features. Switch back and forth between battle action and galactic sector map. See graphic detail you never thought possible. Oh, that's true. This is going to be a graphically enhanced game on the Atari 2600. So let's uh, get right into phaser patrol. Okay. There's a little sector map here, and I tried to play this a little bit, uh, record this a, a little bit ago, and uh, I couldn't get past the screen. Turned out you have to switch the difficulty on your Atari to get to this other screen, so switching difficulties does that, which is annoying because that means you can't just sit back and play next to the Atari to play this game. Comp is damaged. My comp is damaged. Oh no! How will I ever get into this concert? Man. I can't hit a ship at all. I'm not very good at this. Torps damage. Not my torps. Man, they move so fast. I freaking hit something. Alright. Alright. Oh, there's another guy. I guess when it's red is when I shoot. Nope. Oh no. Torps destroyed. LR scheme damage. Alright. I'm gonna try that again. Why is everything going gray? What's going on? Alright. Let's look at the sector map again. Let's go here. Try that one more time. Okay. We got a little countdown for some reason. There's the guy. Lock on. Lock on. Lock on. Urgh. Yeah. We got one. Guy. Comp is damaged. Does that mean I can't lock on anymore? Screw you, game. Okay, graphics. Uh, eh. This was the pack on game for the uh, Arcadia Star Path Supercharger thing. Um, so you think it would have been a little bit better at showing off some of the graphic capabilities, but for an Atari game, actually we'll give it a four. Um, sound, sound is okay. Music, there is none. Story, uh, at least the box didn't tell us the story. Uh, just kind of fighting some bad guys. Controls, oh, controls aren't that great. It's hard to hit a ship and you die really fast. Funness, I'll give it a one and a half. There are better space simulator games out there. Does it hold my attention? A one overall phaser patrol is going to get a two. Uh, and let's play the next game. All right, so our next game is Phoenix for the Atari 2600. This one came out in 1982. And the box art just has a silver Atari cartridge with some uh, pretty rad artwork on the front. The back of the box doesn't give us much. English, that's what we'll go with. As commander of the desert crawler, Phoenix, your mission is bizarre yet vital. Flocks of fierce, mutating birds protect a giant spacecraft that is slowly draining your planet's resources. Shoot through the birds to reach the spaceship and top the parasite within. For one player. Trademark licensed by Centauri Incorporated. <laughs> so, <clears throat> this was an arcade game for the Atari 2600 uh, that came out in 1980. This was the first video game that had a boss that was kind of a separate challenge from the rest of the level, um, but it was before we called them bosses. So this is a this is a first. So that's pretty neat. Uh, so let's play Phoenix. 
The Galaga. Eh, space shooter. Whatever, fixed shooter. Alright, that happened to me whether I wanted it to or not. Guess my shield was automatic. Can I move when I sh- I mean, as a, as a, at least in the Atari version, as a kind of Galaga clone, it's not too bad. Oh. Got a little demon attack action kind of going on here. I obviously blew that one in the bottom's wing up, but he's still flying with one wing. Oh, now he's a flying squid. What is going on? I was defeated. Get it! Get the weird thing! Oh, boo. What? what? Is this random shielding. I don't understand what's going on there. Why does it happen every once in a while? Oh, more of these. Uh, now I got red ones. Damn. Phoenix is mean. I don't know that the Atari version has the boss fight. And I don't know if we'd make it to it anyway. Man, that music is annoying. You can call that music. Phantom Shield, yay. Come on, kill him. He obviously doesn't want you. Oh, he ran into my shield. Oh, here's the boss fight. Interesting concept. No Zelda boss fight, but it's kind of interesting. And it goes back. Okay, so we basically beat that game, right? So graphics. Um, graphics are simple but strong. Uh, sound. Sound is a, a three. Music, oh, one and a half. A story. Um, kind of had a little bit of a story there. Controls. Controls are fine. Funness, um, it's kind of a three. Does it hold my attention? A three overall. Phoenix is going to get a four. Um, not too bad of a Gala Galaga type clone. Uh, and that's it. Let's move on to the next one. All right, so our final game today is Picnic for the Atari 2600, which came out in 1982. Um, looking at the box art here, um, player either your mosquito or a hamburger. I don't know which. Maybe your hamburger avoiding mosquitoes? Sure. And this is from Lionel, I assume that's Lionel Kitty City. Uh, Red Tag Special, previously sold for blank. Now only $4.99. I doubt it's $41.99. Yeah. So this was obviously sold when uh, these games were heavily discounted. Back of the box, Picnic. Picnic is a one or two player game, full colored. Get I'm glad it's full color. Game designed to be played on the Atari video. Is there any game for the Atari that wasn't full color? You call this a picnic? Ah, don't you did. Just when you are ready to sit down and eat your juicy cheeseburgers, a swarm of nasty bugs comes along intent on beating you to the munch. They start eating and you start swatting. The battle has just begun. It's a good thing you bought your bug zapper trap, zapping trap. Now swat those critters into the trap and just maybe there will be something left for you to eat for lunch. I'm just getting hungry. All right, so this is picnic, right? Uh, what? What the heck? Is that the flappy thing at the bottom? I guess those are my burgers. And all I can do is kind of... Kind of flop myself towards them. But only when they get low. Uh-huh. Why would I want to eat these burgers now? I mean, even if I win. I don't want to eat these burgers. Frankly, they don't look all that appealing to begin with. 
even if they weren't half eaten by whatevers. Laser mounted mosquitoes. I don't know what these things are. Why do they turn into kanji when I hit them? Wow, well, this is exciting. I made the number one! Why does this keep going with just one? Oh, oh, we got a giant bat. Get down here. Get down here so I can swat you. Get, 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 get. It's like Space Invaders, but instead of a gun that shoots bullets, you just have to knock yourself into the aliens when they get low enough. It's really kind of not great. Why am I a fingernail? I look like I'm just a floppy fingernail. Oh, U.S. Games, you're the best. Oh, U.S. Games games aren't even interesting enough for Wikipedia articles. There's, like, no info on these. I wonder why. Oh, look, another stupid bat with lasers. Ugh. Picnic. Graphic. Your hamburgers look like giant squares. I don't know. Uh, half. Sound. Half. Music. Zero. Story. I mean, for an Atari game, being on a picnic and having to defend your burgers is kind of a story, I guess. Uh, one. Controls. It's a paddle game, but you can't do much other than flop your stupid fingernail. Um, so it's going to get a two. Funness. Oh, a one and a half. Does it hold my attention? It did for a few minutes just to see what the different enemies were. Overall, Picnic is going to get a one. Uh, that's it. Like, subscribe, and we'll see you next game. Hi, right, welcome back to the Spanless Gamer. We're playing Atari 2600 games in the rough order they came out in. And today we're going to be playing four games. We're playing Piece of Cake, Puyan. Uh, Raft Rider and Raiders of the Lost Ark. So our first game is Piece of Cake, which came out in 1982. Oh, good! It's a sale, only 9.99. That's exciting. Piece of Cake, another U.S. Gay game, U.S. Games game. Great. Piece of Cake is a single-player, full-color design to be played on the Atari 2600 video. Blah, blah blah blah. Piece of Cake, no way. So you thought your first day on the job was going to be easy? I never said that. Well, you're not only going to have to learn the fine art of baking cakes. So my first day on the job, I have to learn how to do my job. Uh, but you also have to master it in a big hurry. This is a production operation and business is booming. It's actually a very simple job at first. You simply take a fresh baked cake from the oven, drop it on the platter, which is moving on a conveyor belt, top that with a cherry, and you'll be rewarded for your artistic endeavors. You must stack them correctly, however, or splat. As your skill progresses, so does your conveyor speed, so keep your cool and try not to earn the dubious title of Butterfingers. Me. Being a top-notch baker chef, bakery chef requires adaptness and calm temperament, so if you can't stand the heat, get out of the kitchen. Oh, okay. Fun facts, this is U.S. Games game which means there's no information on it that i can find very easily and lazily on the internet so let's uh let's just play the game let's do this oh look at that graphic he's got a little mustache a little mustache guy what am i doing okay drop the cherry on top
right. Well, that was that game for you. Oh, graphics. I really like the sprite of the, the chef at the top. He was pretty strong. The cake and everything else, I have no idea what any of that was. So, uh, four and a half. Sound, uh, two and a half. Music, one. Story, a one. Controls, it's a paddle game, three and a half. Funness, um, one and a half. Does it hold my intention? One. Overall, piece of cake is going to get a two. Two and a half. That was piece of cake. Let's move on to the next game. All right, our next game is Puyon for the Atari 2600. So Puyon came out in 1982, uh, and it's a Konami video game cartridge, and it's got a pig and a wolf who are best friends, apparently, and they're going to a 4th of July birthday party or something. Uh, Puyon, Konami 001 video game cartridge. I don't know what was going on on the right side of this box, the back of the box there. It's like there's something missing. Puyan, one day in the middle of a forest, a group of fierce wolves attacked the house where a mother pig, Mama, and her little piglets, Puyans, were living together peacefully. To protect her, Puyans, Mama fought back using arrows and baits. Like most pigs, they have arrows. But desire, uh, despite her efforts, some of her Puyans were kidnapped, full of hate for the wolves. Mama barely seeks out, bravely seeks out the wolves' lair to rescue her Puyans. Will she succeed in overcoming the wolves and bringing her Puyans back home? Probably not. So let's play Puyon. Okay. I'm not positive what's going on here, but it looks like I'm the pig thing on the right side of the screen and I'm shooting these wolves who have, for some reason, balloons. I don't know what that cat thing on the left or the right side of the screen is. Okay. <laughs> yeah, Puyan. Puyan, everybody. Can't say I ever played the classic. Oh, that wasn't a cat, was it? That was a stupid wolf. Puyan, ladies and gentlemen. Puyan. Graphics are fine. Uh, sound. Sound was okay. Two and a half. Music. Uh, had some. Story. Story, I'll give it props for that. Controls. They're fine. Funness. A two and a half. Does it hold my attention? A two and a half. Overall, Puyan is going to get a three. Uh, let's move on to the next game. All right, so our next game is Raft Raider, uh, which came out in 1982. And from the box art here, we got uh, kind of a Davy Crockett looking guy on a raft. And he's got a, a, a beaver there in the front and a moose looking at him in the background. The uh, back of the box is non-existent. Nope, I have it. Raft Raider is a single player, full color game designed to be played on the Atari video, blah, blah, blah. White water everywhere, and hidden in the strong current are many numbers of dangers lying in wait to capsize your log raft. Your mission is to make your way downstream as possible, avoiding treacherous rocks, feisty moose, and sections of trees which have been cut down by a pesky beaver. Skillful maneuvering is not without rewards, however, because there are also gold nuggets appearing in the river, which when touched can be accumulated to extend your trek into the wilderness. So put on your coonskin hat. Cap, get you on your raft and ride the white water to the glorious high scores. Go ahead and try and get your feet wet. Just try to keep the rest of you dry. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's get into Raft Raider here. Oh, I don't like these controls. What? Oh, ooh. Okay, I don't know what I'm doing, ever. Okay, so if I push up, it kind of goes backwards. What is going on? I have no idea how to, go. what is even, no, just no. I can't even figure that out. Graphics. Uh, two and a half. Ah, eh, we'll give it a three. They look a little better than that. Three. Sound. 
one and a half music zero story uh half of one controls a negative two and a half funness zero does it hold my attention no overall raft rider is going to get a uh zero uh, i have no idea how to play that game anyway let's move on to the next game